Hey, I know it's been a while since I posted anything on my building, the Black Pearl, the All Scenario version. This is part 20, and it'll be about 10 minutes long is my guesstimate. Unfortunately, I travel a lot in the winter, so it's been hard to keep up with the, uh, the build. I am committed to getting it finished this spring of 2023. So stick with me. Let me show you what I've accomplished uh, in this segment. And uh, spring is almost here, so I'll start the build in earnest again shortly. I just finished drilling very small holes in all these posts on the front portion of the ship. There, there'll be a, a rope handrail that'll go around here. And this little drill bit, I just kept trying different ones until I got one that fit. And it's about 0.75 millimeters. I think that's what I measured. So it's pretty tiny and I drilled down about probably a little less than a half of an inch. Tried to keep the holes consistent. I've trimmed a bunch of them all the same length so they should come out just about right. And you will need to put a dab of glue in there. But I'll give you an idea what it's going to look like. You will not find any information in the instruction booklet about the ropes that go through these eyelets. In doing a little research on it, I went to the instruction manual and on the parts list under ropes it says take the instruction and plans on the picture as reference to distinguishing the items and assemble them together. So I'm thinking picture. Well, it's not a picture in the manual. It really is the blueprints of the ship. And as I documented earlier, there are several of these uh, blueprints. So I just opened up the first one, which I had already done actually. And you will see that that rope is part number U4. U4 is the six millimeter rope. Here's another bit of help that just by looking at things through and trying to figure it out. They list these U1 through U6. It starts with the largest diameter and goes down to the smallest diameter. So then I took all the ropes that came with the ship and sorted them by diameter. So there's U1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So base it on the diameter of the rope Here's that rope work in place, and it, to me it, it appears a little bit smallish. I've got plenty of rope if I want to at some point put in a larger one, but in watching the movie recently, it is a pretty thin rope that's around the front of the ship right there. I've not tied it in place yet, I just wanted to give you a view of what it's going to look like. There's a lot of information on what I'll refer to as these blueprints, they're actually white, but uh, it's important that you do scan these and go through because there's a lot of hints as to how you use them. As an example, the masts, the drawing is actually one-to-one. -one. So the, the height of the masts can be measured off of these drawings. As another example, these illustrate the dead eyes and it actually gives you the different sizes of rope to use in, on different uh, parts of the dead eye when you're assembling those. Now, things like these take some practice, and I've gotten better. These do take uh, some practice to get used to building them and getting them organized properly, I should say, because it can be a little tricky to get them lined up just right and the, the lengths to have them match is kind of tricky. But there's a lot of detail on the, these drawings that will help make it simpler, again, because it is a one-to-one -one scale. So it's the actual scale. There are a total of four of these plans. I have not even gotten into the other three yet. I'm going to work on this one and go from there. There are a total of four of these plans. I have not even gotten into the other three yet. I'm going to work on this one and go from there. I did not mention this previously, but these rails here to lower the lifeboats down, they're kind of a rub strip. 
it interferes with this box or this is actually a door you can make it so this opens but you will have to cut this one rail so that you can have that door come out I'm not going to do that I'm just going to leave it closed because you can turn the ship around and look into the lower deck an earlier model that I did I did make this operational I just decided not to this time I could actually cut this now and this is still uh, independent so it could be popped out but uh, I'm just gonna leave it in place I think it looks fine that way but it it would be like a loading port for the side of the ship I'm getting ready to put in these supports that uh, hold the rigging for the dead eyes and things the instructions recommend that you soak this because it has a slight bend to it so I've done that and I burned up my plank bender if you're familiar with them so I can use a soldering iron which I did on the first one started to and then I I thought of something a little that I think will work better here's the one that I put the just a slight arch to it roughly goes right about there my alternative method is to take a clamp and then just slightly tighten this clamp not much see I've got the kind of a curvature that I want once I got the general curvature that I want I can take a heat gun and apply a little heat The advantage of this technique is I also dried out the wood. And again, I don't know if you can see that well, but it does have a, a slight curvature to it. And if I need to bow it back down a little bit, especially when it's warm, I can do that. The curvature is very small. You might be able to just get the wood to, to form that shape without soaking it. One thing to be aware of when you're working with CA glue or super glue, I was putting this trim piece on and I was striking it with a small hammer. Super glue is very sensitive to shock and I destroyed my stairs, which I can put them back on, but it's just a little frustrating when you do that. And then you discover, oh, something just fell off. I guess that's something you learn as you go as you're a novice shipbuilder. I've been working on getting my stair steps back into place and it's been a little bit of a struggle so I've made some little impromptu tools like this little platform that gives me the space I want between each step and I can just kind of bring it into place and that will kind of hold it right there. I suppose if I had this to do over again, I would have put a little brace underneath each one before I even put it in place, but that's working. I've got uh, probably five or six more steps to put in place, but that gives you an idea of how I'm doing it. Now I'm just going to let that sit probably for an hour, and then I'll take this out and work on the next one. This concludes part 20 of my Building the Black Pearl All Scenario version. Uh, I'm making slow but steady progress in the coming weeks as spring arrives. I hope to get a lot more accomplished. So stay tuned and we'll bring part 21 to you in the next few weeks, I'm sure. As always, thanks for watching.